God bless you guys. How is everyone doing? So today we're going to continue in our series. We are talking about prayer and we have been elaborating on why some prayers do not get answered. I feel like it is just as important to understand why some prayers get answered and just some don't. Most of the pastors are preaching on faith and how to get your prayers answered, but very few times do you hear about why certain prayers go unanswered. It's a very unpopular thing that many people don't teach on. Some prayers don't get answered and it's for a very good reason. Turn with me to James 4, 3. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust. Now when you go to Google and you simply look up what does amiss mean, it means not quite right, inappropriate, or out of place. And now let's take a look at the second part of that scripture. It says that ye may consume it upon your lust. And if you guys understand that this scripture is not talking about sexual perversion, it is speaking about any sort of lust of the heart, any sort of lust of the flesh, anything could become a lust when you exalt it higher than God. It's when that thing becomes your God. So for instance, money can become a lust of the heart. Greed can be a lust of the flesh. Overeating can be a lust. There are so many different types of lust. This is not only talking about sexual perversion. This is any sort of loss of the flesh, anything that you desire that can become your God. With that being said, you can understand why it's so important that God does not answer that prayer. Sometimes you're praying for financial breakthrough. You're praying for riches. But if your heart has not been humbled, if you have not been able to handle the little that you have, if you don't bless people, if you don't know how to tithe and give offerings, and I know, don't get religious on me. I know some people don't believe in tithes. Just listen, please, and understand what I I'm saying forget that momentarily please if you are just greedy what makes you think the father will bless you with riches what makes you think the father will give you an increase when you're not even grateful with the little that you get when you don't even share with the little that you get you're complaining constantly about the little that you get when god can trust you with the little he's able to give you much more another example just an example let's say you're praying for wisdom right but you have not been humble yet being wise can cause you to be boastful and cause you to become prideful because you know a lot and that thing can really puff you up and and really get to your head if you have not gone through a process of humility and being broken before the lord why in the world would the lord choose to give you more wisdom if that's what you're praying for you don't have the capacity to be able to handle what is it you're praying for because that thing could become a thorn in your side that one thing that you're praying for can distract you from god because many times the things that we're praying for when it is a loss of the flesh when you're not ready for it it can become a distraction and i know this may be so hard to believe but i needed a revelation on this an understanding of this and the father has enlightened me to understand this thing sometimes when you don't have a thing you're better off than to have that thing because it keeps you in a place where you are dependent on god where you are constantly coming before the lord it keeps you in a place of humility and it keeps god in the place of god because sometimes when you get what you ask god for many Many people don't come back. When you don't have a thing, you are always before the altar. You're always before God's feet. Father, I need this. I need this. I need this. And the moment you get it, so many people end up walking away. And it's a, a good example is when Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem from Galilee and he healed 10 lepers. And out of all 10, only one person came back to give God thanks. So what happened to the other 10? You guys got to understand that if it is a loss of the flesh and it will distract you from the spirit of God, if it removes you from the presence of God, if it causes you to turn away from God because you have now gotten what you want, is that truly what you want? I'm not boasting, but I'm dead serious when I tell you guys, there is nothing in life. There is nothing that life has to offer me that is more important than the spirit of God. And you guys can keep it you can have the wealth you can have it all if i do not have the holy spirit there is nothing there is nothing that is worth the place of the holy spirit i'm gonna be honest with you guys one of my desires my heart's desires is wisdom i want the wisdom of the holy spirit but one thing i constantly tell the lord don't ever give me too much wisdom to where i become prideful and i think i know it all always keep me where i'm humble because being in a place of pride will cause destruction 
Because I come to understand that being in a place of pride separates me from the Spirit of God because then I'm not teachable to the Holy Spirit. When you're not teachable by the Holy Spirit, it opens doors for deception to come in and for knowledge of deceiving spirits to come and to deceive your mind. And then you have thoughts of fleshly things. So as a teacher and you call by the Spirit of God, you have to be so careful when you're asking the Lord for wisdom that it doesn't consume you, that pride doesn't begin to consume you. So you have to get to the understanding. You're asking the Lord for more wisdom, but can you handle the wisdom? Are you humble enough to be able to handle the wisdom? Same thing with wealth. Can you handle the wealth or will you just splurge and waste what God has given on to you. When certain prayers don't get answered, it is best for you because there should be nothing, nothing worth taking the place of God. And let me tell you something, when you begin to have a loss of the flesh, that thing completely takes over your life to where it distracts you from the Father. And you need to get an understanding whether or not that thing is worth distracting you from the Spirit of God. But your prayer should always be, let your will be done. And when you pray, let your will be done, that means let your will be done in my life. That means examine me, God, and see what your will is for me because you know where I need to be. You know how, what I need, what I don't need. And Father, if this thing distracts me from you, I don't need it. I don't want it. As a matter of fact, keep it far from me. You have got to develop the fear of God so much where you're so afraid to lose his presence that nothing in the world compares to the presence of God and having the spirit of God in your life. If there's anything that would take his place, you don't need it and you don't want it. So why again do prayers not get answered when you pray for certain things? It's because God is protecting you from losing yourself. When you don't get certain prayers answered, when you're asking for materialistic things, sometimes, yes, the Father will grant it onto us if we're ready for it. But when he doesn't answer it, you guys have got to get the understanding that it is in your best interest. And God is protecting you from yourself. He's protecting you from you losing his spirit, you losing his presence. Because again, when you get certain stuff, that's when you move away from the spirit of God. Sometimes we're sick and we're better off sick because it keeps us on our knees before the Lord. And that's hard to believe. Let me tell you, that is so hard to believe, but it is true. Sometimes it is better off that we remain broke <laughs> because it keeps us in a humble place before the Lord. It keeps us before the throne of God. When you begin to understand this is when you have tapped into a place of the Lord is more important to me than anything else. It all boils down to your heart posture. What do you really want? Do you really desire God or are you just coming to God to use him for this materialistic thing that you desire? Because if you really desire God, then you would say, Father, whatever it is that distracts me from you, I don't need it and I don't want it. So what is your heart really set on? You need to figure that out. It's okay if some of your prayers go unanswered, if you're asking for materialistic things, examine yourselves and understand that if you don't get that thing, some prayers are answered by consistency and praying without season, but then some prayers don't get answered because of our motives. You guys should go before the Lord, read that scripture and ask the Lord to give you an understanding on it. God bless you guys and take care.